So the last video was the first in this binomial expansion series, but this video will be the first where we actually do some binomial expansion. Let's start with this. Um, this is binomial expansion because a binomial means two numbers, and here are two numbers, 1 and x. And then you expand them um, via this power because, of course, this is actually 1 plus x times itself, times 1 plus x, and then we expand. So this is binomial expansion. Now, of course, I'm hoping that anyone watching this video doesn't have a particularly hard time doing this one right here and has probably done this exact one before. Um, so let's think about raising it up a little bit to the to the 3. So expand this. Now, of course, well, this is just 1 plus x multiplied by itself twice. Now, we already know what these two multiplied make because we just did it. Um, so now we can multiply this. Well, okay, 1 times 1 is 1, 1 times x is x, 2x times 1 is 2x, and so on. Multiply all of them, get six things, collect them all together, and you get this. And that's our expansion of 1 plus x to the power of 3. And we could even probably do this with 1 plus x to the 4, I think, probably, if we really wanted to, because this is just 1 plus x times itself four times, but we know what each of these two things is. In fact, actually, what I think I'm going to do is just take this result. The first three, I think, make this, because we just did it. Yeah, good shout. Um, so the first we just make that, we just did it. So now, of course, we multiply 1 by 1 and x, and then 3x by 1 and x, and then this by 1 and x, and then this by 1 and x. And I think we can get all of this, collect them all together, and we get this. Now, what it's possible to notice is that there's certainly some symmetry going on here uh, with all of these answers. For example, the previous one went 1, 3, 3, 1 in terms of the coefficients, and the x's kind of got, or there's no x's, then there's 1, then there's x squared, then there's x cubed. Here go, we go 1, 4, 6, 4, 1, I guess, as well here. And the x's, again, no x's, but x, x squared, x cubed, x4. So there's certainly some symmetry here, and it's really hopeful to think, well, maybe there's a quicker way of doing this particularly when we get higher and higher here. Like 1 plus x to the 5, we could probably do, I guess, if we really wanted to, um, the way that we already expand things. I mean, we did 1 plus x to the 4, but if we were doing, say, 1 plus x to the 10 or 11 or 12, I think we'd all be pretty unhappy about doing this kind of method for that. So maybe we can kind of leverage this kind of symmetry and leverage the idea that I went in the first video, of course, the choose function. Maybe we can leverage that to figure out an easier way of doing this. So, okay, I'm going to write out it first. So this is multiplied by itself five times, of course. And then I'm not going to expand out the whole thing. And I'm also not going to expand out in parts, like expand out these two and then add in a third and, and so on. I'm just going to say, well, what's going to be the first thing that I get if I were to expand this out? Well, if I just multiplied all the ones together, like if I just literally bounced along all of these ones, my first term would just be a one. Because, of course, 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 is just 1. Okay, that's pretty boring. Now, what happens if instead of bouncing along all of the 1s, what happens if I chose an x? It doesn't matter which one, but what happens if I just went to this x? I started at this 1 again, went to this x, and then just went to all the 1s again. Now, 1 times x times 1 times 1 times 1 is just x. So I'll get an x from this. But then I think... Is there another way for me to get an x out of this aside from doing this here? And there is, right? Because instead of choosing this x to go to, I could choose this x to go to. I could go 1 to 1 to x to 1 to 1. And this would also multiply to give me x. So I'd certainly have a plus x plus another x from the two kind of things that I just did. But how many ways can I do that? Well, of course, there are five x's here. And I could travel to any one of them in order to get my 1 times 1 times 1 times 1 times x. And so there must be five ways of getting an x out of this. And so the next term must be a plus 5x. And then I think, well, how am I getting x squared terms from this? Well, to get an x squared term, I'd need to grab two x's as I was doing this. So maybe I start one again, and I go to x. But then I need to go to another x. And then I need to just go to the ones again. And this will give me an x squared. If I, if I multiply all these, that will give me an x squared. But how many ways are there of getting an x squared? Because these aren't the only two x's I could choose. And notice that verb that I just used there, choose. There are five x's that I could go to, and I want to choose two of them. So the number of ways for me to get an x squared to come out of this is going to be five x's, choose two of them. And this is where that first video came in. The number of ways, uh, for example, I could choose these two and then just go to the ones. So I need to choose two x's out of the five I've got. So the number of ways to do that is five choose two. I've, I'm choosing to use, uh, get it, choose. I'm choosing to use this, this notation rather than the vector notation. It really doesn't matter what you do. But there are five choose two ways of getting an x squared term from this. 
because I literally just need to choose two of the x's and then just go to the rest of the ones. What about the x cubed terms then? Well, I could choose an x first and then I could choose the other three x's, but I think we can see where I'm going with this. I need to choose three x's out of the five. So the number of ways of me getting an x cubed term is five choose three. Um, that will get me my x cubed terms. And then of course, next would be five choose four when I need four x's. And lastly would be five choose five. But to choose five things when you have a pile of five things, there's only one way to do that. So this makes sense, right? Because this is just gonna be the single x five that I get when I multiply all of the x's together at the end, right? So five choose five is just one, so that makes sense. The other thing that I also wanted to say is that five choose one, choosing one thing out of a group of five is the same as choosing four things out of a group of five. Because, uh, you know, when you take the four things, you're leaving one behind. So you can almost think of it in reverse and say that you've just left, you've just taken that one thing, right? Uh, you know, you've taken four things out, left one, but just imagine that you've taken that one instead. So it, it's the same kind of idea. And so instead of jumping around these X's, choosing the X's, I could have jumped down the ones and said back here, maybe, uh, if we go all the way back to when I was making a squared term, I could have said, I'm choosing three of the ones, right? I'm choosing this one, this one, and this one. And that will give me by default my X squared term because I must be picking two of the X's. So I could say I'm choosing three ones out of five, but five choose two is the same as five choose three. Again, because of that symmetry, picking two things out of a pile is the same as leaving three things. So five choose three ends up being the same as five choose two, and five choose one ends up being the same thing as five choose four. So we're seeing that symmetry in action. Oh no, of course, five choose five is the same thing as five choose zero, which technically this is. Um, but anyway, that would be my expansion. When you type all of these into a calculator, which you can do, obviously, um, you get these numbers here, and that'll be your expansion. So what about a plus b to the four? Well, let's write it out and think, well, first we can just go along all the a's, right? We can just multiply all the a's together and we get a to the four. That'll be our leading term. Next, I wanna choose three a's and only one b, right? So I could do it like this. I could do this a, this a, and this b with this a, but of course I could choose a different b to do this and I would still get a cubed b because of course there are three a's here, so they're multiplying to make a cubed. I've got a singular b, so it's gonna be a cubed b, but there are four choose one, I need to choose one b ways of doing that. So this would be another way. Um, so it's four choose one, or alternatively four choose three, because I'm choosing three a's of course, but there's that symmetry there. Four choose one is the same as four choose three. Again, taking one thing out of a pile of four is the same as leaving three things. Um, so you can think about it like that. Um, but anyway, that'll be our first time. Then, of course, we need to ch choose two b's out of the four. So it's going to be four choose two a squared b squared. Um, because again, you've got two a's, so that's going to be a squared. You've got two b's, so that's going to be b squared. Then you need to pick uh, three of the b's out of the four. So that's four choose three. You'll be picking one a by default by doing that. If you choose three of the b's, you'll be picking one a by default. But then the three b's will make a b cubed. And then finally, of course, you've got four choose four, which is just one because there are only one way of picking four things out of a pile of four, b to the four, which is just this last kind of thing here. And again, you could have written here that that's four choose zero if you really wanted to. It's kind of up to you. But anyway, after that, you put all of these into a calculator, the four chooses, put those into a calculator, and you get this expansion. Um, and once you get very used to this choose function, I think it's very quick to do it like this. Let's do another one, two plus y to the six. Now, be a bit careful of this. You can pause the video now and try and give this a go if you want to. Um, now, of course, we need to write them all out like this. Well, we don't need to, as you can stop doing this at some point, but I'm just trying to be clear about what I'm doing here. Now, of course, the leading term is going to be 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, which is 2 to the 6. Now, the next term, I want to grab 1y. So let's just say that I grabbed this y. I would do y times 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 twos. But of course, there's six choose one way of me doing that because there are six y's to choose from. So I've got six choose one because I want to choose one y. I'm going to have five twos when I do that because I'm only choosing one y. So there's going to be five choose twos that I'm going to need to go to. And then of course I've just got my y. Next, when I pick two y's, I'm going to have to also pick four twos. So not only have I got the six choose two thing, where I need to select, I have to have all the different options of taking two y's out of this. But I also have 
two to the power of four every time that I do that. So if I pick these two y's and have two times two times two times two, which is two to the four, to go along with that. And then, of course, I get my y squared because I'm picking two y's that multiply together to make y squared. And I keep doing this. The next one will be six choose three y's. If, I picking, if I'm picking three y's, I'm going to also have to pick three twos, which is going to be two to the power of three. And then, of course, I'm going to have y to the power of three because I'm picking three y's. Um, and then, of course, it continues like this. And notice how the two power is going down each time because I'm picking one less two every time I want to pick an, an extra y. Right? And these powers, of course, have always got to add up to six. Five plus one, four plus two, three plus three, because I've got, I'm, I'm only allowed to pick one thing from each bracket as I sort of bounce along here. Um, so I keep going in this vein, exactly the same every time. And then, of course, I can just type, what is six choose one times two to the power five into a calculator? And I get all of my terms that a calculator can give me very, very quickly. Like I, I literally just type in all of these things into a calculator to get this. Or you can do it the proper way by hand if you want to as well. Uh, one more. I think this will be the last one I do. Um, yeah, let's write them all out. Now you bounce along the threes. I would give this a go first if you want to, so you can get it right. Bounce along the threes first. Three times three times three times three. That's three to the power of four. Now I need to pick one lot of two x, which of course means I need to also pick three lots of the three. Um, so that's going to be three to the power of three. There's four choose one ways of picking my two x. I'm picking 2x out of four things. But you need to keep this 2x here. You're picking a 2x, not an x. You're picking a 2x. And that really starts to matter in the next term. Now, I need to pick two of the 2x's. So that's going to be four choose two. I'm going to also have to have two of the threes because, of course, I need to, if I'm picking two of the 2x's, there are two threes in the other two brackets that need to come with me. And then it's 2x squared. It's going to be a 2x times the other 2x. So that's the thing that some people sometimes mess up. That's going to have to expand out properly for a 4x squared. And then you just keep going. As soon as you, you know that idea, then you're, you're pretty much fine. Get all uh, five of the terms together. And again, just get this all on a calculator. Just type in 3 squared times 4 choose 2 times 4, and you get this term, for instance. Just type them all into a calculator to get them all, um, and you'll have your answer. Um, and there it is. So that'll be that. If you want to uh, have the like official formula, this is the official formula that the textbook will give you. Um, a plus b to the n is equal to a to the n. So notice how the a to the n's go down by one each time, a to the n minus one, to the n minus two, to the n minus three, and so on. While the b's, the second term, go up each time. I always used x here. So no x's, x, x squared, x cubed, all the way up to xn. And then you've got these choose functions, which they're using in vector form. That's absolutely fine. This last one should be n choose k but they just haven't, sorry, it should be n choose n, but they haven't got it because n choose n is just one, so they haven't bothered writing it. And then, of course, they've got their formula for the choose function, which I uh, proved in the last video as well.